The Xbox Series S is one of the most unusual consoles I've seen in years. It's less expensive, less powerful version of Microsoft's flagship Xbox Series X. The kind of thing you'd expect to see few years into a console's lifespan. Like a PS2 Slim, and yet here it is, a sleek white box launching on the exact same day as its bigger, beefier counterpart. Welcome to Tech Kings, today I will tell you everything you need to know about Xbox Series S, I will show you its performance, gaming, all the details and good stuff. But before we begin, if you like this content, please like, subscribe and ring the notification bell. Now without further ado, let's get started. At $300, the Xbox Series S is much easier on the wallet than the $500 Xbox Series X, but price is never the same thing as value. Is the Xbox Series S worth your money? And more importantly, will it continue to be worth your money for the entire lifespan of the current console generation? While it's impossible to say what might happen in the future having put the Series S through its pace, I find myself cautiously optimistic about this device. No, it's not as powerful as the Xbox Series X. Its hardware limits what it can do, from performance, storage, backward compatibility and media perspectives. And yet, once you get past that, it's still a powerful console with struggling amount of games and offer. Not to mention that it plays streaming media with ease and won't take up all the much room in your house. Approach the Xbox Series S as the be all and all of next generation gaming at your own peril, but approach it as a starter of companion device, and you may be pleasantly surprised. The charming little gadget has a lot to offer if you know what to expect going in. When I first took the Xbox Series S out of its box, I could not hardly believe how small it was. The console measures 10.8 to 5.9 to 2.6 inches, making it significantly smaller than the PS5, PS4, Xbox Series X or Xbox One. Most of the console is white, save for the circular black vent on the top, which contrasts pleasantly with the rest of the frame. It has rubber feet on one of the horizontal surfaces and one of the vertical ones, and there are plenty of ventilation, no matter which way you orient it. While the console is very small, may not seem like much of selling point. I was surprised how much of the difference the Series S size made. My entertainment center is already overbounded with gadgetry, but I had no problem finding a little nook for the Series S. When I was done with testing, I moved it into my bathroom and slipped it right between a big TV stand and the edge of the crowded dresser. Even my domestic partner, who objects to consoles in the bedroom due to their monstrous size, gradually accepts this device. Like the Xbox Series X or the Xbox Series S, keep its port simple. There is a USB-A port in the front along with a power button and pairing button. Since the Series S has no disk drive, the rest of the front panel is just empty space. On the back, there are two more USB-A ports, an HDMI port, Ethernet port and the power port. I have expected the Ethernet port to be missing, since that's usually the thing to go in a cheaper gadget variations. But I am glad that it's still here. My complaint here is the same as my complaint about Xbox Series X. There are no USB-C ports. For consoles like that, USB-C port is needed. It provides faster charging and data transfer. To say nothing of new gaming accessories that rely on USB-C dongles. 
If you have used the Xbox One interface, then you use the Xbox Series X interface. There is not me playing Koi, it's simple an observation. While Microsoft has updated the Xbox storefront over the past few months, the actual interface has not changed significantly in years. When you boot up the console, you still see a home screen with all of your most recent games and activities. When you scroll down, you'll see Store, Media and Game Pass options. Hit the Xbox button on the control and, and you'll be able to navigate through your games and apps, see your full library, see system notifications, manage your friend list via your achievements, access settings and so forth. At the risk of stating the obvious, the Xbox Series S is not nearly as powerful as the Xbox Series X. If you are familiar with the two consoles hardware specs, then you will know why. Whereas the Series X boasts the GPU with the 12 teraflops of output, 60GB RAM, 1TB SSD storage and 4K Blu-ray disk drive, the Series S has the 4 teraflops of output, 10GB RAM, 512GB SSD storage and no disk drive at all. Most Xbox Series X games will run at 4K resolution and 60 frames per second, although certain titles will support resolutions up to 8K and the frame rates up to 112 frames per second. Xbox Series S, on the other hand, has the max resolution of 40 p for games, although the 112 FPS frame rate is still technically possible. Without getting too granular, the bottom line is that the Xbox Series S is much less powerful than the Xbox Series X which is why it costs so much less. However, the Series S mod specs can be either a Dell breaker, an announce or the non-issue, depending on your setup and how you plan to use your console. I run three tests to evaluate how well the Xbox Series S performed. First, I choose few games from Microsoft's optimized for Xbox Series X and S list, Gear 5, Ori and Cyberpunk. Then I played through segments of each game on the Xbox Series X on 4K TV and the Xbox Series S on the 4K TV and the Xbox Series S on 1080p TV. This way I could compare not only how well the Series S stacked on the Series X but also wherever the Series S is good choice for buyers with older TVs. Remember, not even half of American households currently own 4K TVs, while 1080p sets are not exactly cutting-edge technology, they are a lot more common than you might think, especially if perhaps among the demographic that would pay $300 for a new game console, but not $500. The results of this test came as a pleasant surprise. It won't shock you to learn that the uh, games I tested looked best on the Xbox Series X, but the Xbox Series S did not look bad in all comparison. In fact, most differences were very subtle, even when observed on the 4K OLED TV with HDR active. Generally speaking, the Xbox Series X offered richer color palettes, better draw distance and slight more detailed textures, but those were the only big differences that I know. Even when I was looking out of them, in Gears 5 the Series S did not capture details in a dark room the way that the Series X did, but out of in open levels it still rendered characters, backgrounds and items gorgeously. Perhaps the biggest difference I noticed was in miniature, where the Series X had deeper, richer colors for its underwater landscape, but even then it's sort of things that only stuck out to me, because I played the two games on the two different consoles back to back. In general, the Series S upscales content to 4K beautifully, and if you have the 1440p display you won't need to upscaling at all. The Xbox Series X also loaded content a little faster, but not nearly as much as I'd expected. In all four games I tested, I measured load times in seconds rather than minutes, even going right from the main screen into the save file. Load times between levels were fast enough that I could not even whip out my phone to time them. Admittedly, it took a while to go through the title screen of Gears 5 on the Series S, but the Xbox Series X was not quite as fast as I expected on this season. 
The only real downside to the Series C's performance is that on 1080p TV. It looks almost identical to what you found in Xbox One. However, it still loads content much faster than the Xbox One did. Since the Xbox One still costs $300, the Series S is much smarter buy from the get to go. The Xbox Series S has one feature that's worth discussing by itself. Quick resume, the novel innovation also presents in the Series X lets you suspend a handful of games, then switch among them without having to restart each game and reload your save files. A few things that you should know about this, it's not fast, it does not work with every game and you can do it with more than about 4 or 5 games at the time, but it's still a handy feature, particularly since it persists even after you turn your console off. Quick resume is not perfect, after restarting my console my games crashed sometimes, which meant I had to start the software from scratch anyway, but it's a handy feature if you are like jumping among multiple games in a single play session, and not really worth writing home about if you don't. Like the Xbox Series X, the Xbox Series S is the backwards compatible with just about every Xbox One title plus dozens of Xbox 360 and the original Xbox titles. Microsoft has discussed this feature as long for months, so I won't tell you every detail. As I tested the Xbox Series S, I noticed a backwards compatibility problem that I did not have with the Xbox Series X. There is no disk drive, this seems almost too obvious to point out. Expect there is makes backwards compatibility a little tornier. While buying digital games has become extremely common over the last few years, it was not widespread at the beginning of the Xbox One generation, and I was even less accessible before that. In other words, if you have the big physical Xbox, Xbox 360 library, it won't do a good leak on the Xbox Series S. You will have to either buy those games again digitally, hope that they get added to Xbox Game Pass, or simply buy the bullet and buy the Xbox Series X. Another Xbox Series S innovation that does more with less in its controller. For the most part, the Xbox Series S controller is identical to the Xbox One's two extended hand grip, two struggle along sticks, a D pad, four face buttons, four shoulder buttons, two option buttons, and the power button, all in the same place as before. It's not until you get the Xbox Series S controller in your hand that you begin to feel the difference. The surface is matte and a little more resistant to sweat than before. More importantly, the grips are now textured in the back, which makes the controller easier to hold and more comfortable overall. There is also a shear button in the center of the controller which lets you take screenshots and video clips and whatnot. I never actually used it, but you might. The controller only major downgrade is that it still relies on AA batteries out of the box rather than the more environmentally friendly rechargeable battery. In this video we discuss how the sleek approachable console could be just the ticket for young casual or budget-minded gamers who want the latest, the greatest games, but are not quite ready to take a 500 plunge. On the other end of the spectrum, if you are planning to buy the Xbox Series X, the Series S makes a fantastic backup console for a bedroom or office, particularly since your library and save files can come with you anywhere. The Xbox Series S too niche to recommend to everyone. If you have the high-end 4K TV, you are arguably better off with the Xbox Series X, particularly since the lower specs. The Series S may be less equipped to handle next-generation titles, as they become more demanding in the next few years. The lack of disk drive limits its backwards compatibility, but it's still a very solid gaming console you can buy right now. Thanks for watching, leave the comment below what do you think about this gaming console and don't forget to like this video, subscribe to our channel and ring the notification bell. See you soon, bye!